Hey guys, <clears throat> it is me again, as you can plainly see. Today is, uh, make sure my date's right, guys. Yeah, Tuesday, August 21st, makes it day 234 on our Daily Bread Project 2012. As always, guys, it's, it's very good to be here tonight. I got smart tonight. I had a white shirt on. The shirt I actually went and worked out in, but I changed this black one before I started this uh, video because it makes a huge difference in the in the file size on these videos. So uh, anyway, guys, having said that, like I said, it is good to be here. Uh, hope everybody's doing all right. Hope everybody's having a, everybody's having a good night. Um. Let's see. Um, I gotta try to make this a little quick, guys. I mean, I'm not real late tonight. I've been later, but I didn't need to try to get it in fairly quick. Oh, I did want to recommend a book to any of you guys. Um, I actually read about mm, half, to, well, maybe three quarters, three quarters of the way through this book. And then quit. You know, I just got busy doing other things. That's, to be honest, that's been a couple years ago. And uh, I've read some other books about Hudson Taylor, who so it is. Um, and I, I got about three quarters of the way of this one, like I said, quit reading it. And I got to thinking about the other day, my, maybe it was a little convicting, it probably was, to, to finish reading this book. It's really good, it's really inspirational. So I've started over, because I knew I couldn't go back and, you know, remember all the details I needed to remember. So I've started over reading it. I read some on it the other night. I've read, I think I read about 22, 23 pages that first night I started reading on it again. So it's not a real thick book. But anyway, it, it's just called, guys, it's the autobiography. It's just called uh, Men of Faith, Hudson Taylor by J. Hudson Taylor. It's, uh, like I said, it's uh, it's his autobi autobiography. Uh, and for you guys that don't know who J. Hudson Taylor was, he was the man pretty much, which, I mean, we, we still don't, think of China as a as a big Christian country because I mean it's not it, it is still mainly well I don't know where, what religion they do follow if they follow any religion but uh, anyway what Christians they are in China and there are populations of Christians in China I know they have to do it here recently anyway on kind of underground in secret but this guy right here J. Hudson Taylor is the one that pretty much took the gospel of Jesus Christ to China uh, back in the 1860s somewhere through there it was in the 1800s so anyway guys if you can get this book this is just a little paperback that my pastor actually you know the one that died before before uh, I took over it was his book and he gave this to me before he died and uh, it's a real good book guys I mean it's just like one instance in it and I know I said I was going to keep this short guys but like I said, when the Lord leads you to tell something, you need to tell it. Um, there's just one instance in it that I can remember, and I've not got to that part again yet, but I can remember from last, when I started reading it before. He was working uh, as a doctor's assistant. Uh, he became a doctor, I think. I know he went to medical school. I don't remember if he actually became a doctor or not. I think he did. Uh, but anyway, uh, he was working for this doctor, you know, like his assistant, and he had you know, been like two weeks without pay and it was time for payday and the doctor forgot to pay him. Just, and anyway, he said that he prayed that God would take care of it, that, you know, that, that, that God would send some kind of answer and he was going to depend on God to come up with this answer. He said, I'm not going to ask him. I'm not going to ask him for a payday. I'm going to depend on God to do it. Anyway, guys, I, it, it's pretty good. Like I said, he just, he tells about going through that time when he thought he was, I mean, several times he thought he was going to starve to death. Uh, he got um, some kind of sickness that they was bad for having back then. I don't know if it was the plague. I don't remember what it was. But he got it, uh, was doing a, a an autopsy, a dissection on a body, you know, in, in his class. And uh, he had a cut or something on his hand, got the blood on him. And anyway, he liked to die over that. And he talks about God uh, miraculously bring, bringing him through that. And... Uh, Anyway, guys, it's just, there's so much inspiration in it, guys. I highly recommend it. So, anyway, having said that, Brother Woody, I have not forgot about the book you sent me. Brother, I'm looking for it. I asked Mom the other night. You can ask her. 
I, my aunt, like I said, told you before, my aunt that comes in and stays with us sometimes, uh, which I want you guys to pray for. Seriously, I, you know, I don't know. I don't know if she's getting Alzheimer's. I don't know if she's having many strokes, but she can remember some things, guys, better than I can remember. But like short term, real short term stuff, she can't remember. I mean, she just she'll ask you the same question three times in five minutes. Um, anyway, when she comes in, she's bad for helping mom, trying to help mom clean the house, and she'll pick stuff up and put it where nobody knows. Uh, so anyway. I'm assuming she put that book up and put it somewhere. It's only me and mom can figure. So we're looking for it, brother. As soon as I find it, I'm going to read it. Um, so, what else was I going to say? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, uh, guys, just pray for me. Uh, I got a situation at work. Uh, well, I mean, it's not really a situation, but I'm afraid it's going to turn into a situation. What it is, guys, we're working on this old car for the Snap-on Man. And, I mean, you couldn't ask for no better person to deal with. Uh, but, number one, when it, when he was asking me about the car, he said, you know, I, when he was asking about bringing it, you know, he said, do you want do you want to even fool with it? Because, you know, I know that you don't do, you know, it's a 67 Mercury Cougar. And, you know, we don't really fool with that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, some people may assume that that stuff is easier to work on. And maybe for some old shade tree it is, but you know, for guys like me that work on modern stuff every day, a car like that is just it's it's a totally different ballpark. It's not any harder. It's actually easier, but it's just so much different. Anyway, he said I need my brakes fixed, my lights fixed, my headlights fixed, uh and my air conditioning fixed. Well see he kept saying I need my air conditioning the air conditioning fixed on it. He didn't tell me and I didn't find out till he brought the car. There's nothing on the car for our conditioning. Uh, it was kind of a little bit misconception. I guess we just got mixed up. I should ask him more. But the way he kept saying it, it was like the car had everything on it for the air. It just didn't work. There's no air compressor on it. There's no condenser. There's an old set of lines where they've been cut, and that's it. So anyway, what I'm getting at, guys, it's going to take over a $1,000 of parts to fix this car. And I don't know anything about a 67 model. There's no button inside the car for, to turn the AC on and off. I don't know if they had a button or not. If it's just been gone. The wiring harness has been changed on the car. There's no wires there to turn the AC pump on. And I'm just to be honest what I'm getting at, guys. I'm afraid I'm getting a mess on this car. And the thing is, too, he's starting to try to hurry me now. We've had the car, I guess we've had it about a month now. And it was one of those deals. I thought I made it clear to him when he brought it. Now, listen, you know, I can't put my good money making jobs in and out jobs in front of your car I'll work on it but well anyway he says the body shop's waiting on it now so he's he's getting in kind of a hurry and between that and I don't know guys like I said between that and, and I'm afraid we're going to order this thousand dollars worth of air conditioning parts and I'm still not going to be able to get the AC to work because the car is just so rough I don't know if all the under dash stuff is working I don't know. I'm just afraid I'm getting in a hornet's nest, guys. So I just want y'all to pray for me. Pray, pray, pray that the Lord will straighten this out for me. To be honest, I wouldn't care a bit if he just decided not to even fool with air conditioning right now. Get it on to the body shop, bring it back later. I wouldn't even care if he said, well, I'll just get somebody else to do it. Because I'm just not really equipped to spend 10 hours a day for weeks at a time on this car. And that's what it's going to take to, to do it. So anyway, guys, pray about that. So, having said that, guys, like I said, this, this video is already longer than I wanted it to be. I was going to try to just get into telling you a little bit about a workout tonight. Um, but, tip, I mean, we, we it's a little bit shorter workout. We just went. My buddy got off of work late. Uh, I pray that his, his work schedule will ease up a little bit. I mean, I, I'm glad that he's, you know, around here right now, especially anything to do with the coal mining business, and he, he, he's a heavy equipment mechanic. Um you know, I'm tickled that he's still actually getting to work overtime and work late and work on weekends and all that. But, uh, you know, we've missed two Saturdays in a row because of it. And tonight, we almost missed it because he had to work late. And, but we went anyway, got a little short workout in, worked out for right at an hour. We've been working out for about an hour and a half or, or a little longer some nights. But uh, tonight was about an hour. Had a good workout, so I praise the Lord for that. So, having said that, guys, let's get to the important thing tonight. And that is, of course, the Word of God. 2 Timothy chapter 2, 
starting in verse 1, guys. Here we go. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men, who shall be able to teach others also. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Just like we're supposed to do, guys. We're supposed to endure the hardness. You know, I, I preached that a little bit Sunday. I was talking about it at church. That the Lord never promised to take us out of these bad situations. And that's something that these prosperity preachers and some other people that just want to they want to misdirect people. They they say, "Oh, the Lord, if you're good enough and if you're praying enough, God will take you. He won't let He won't ever let anything bad happen to you. He'll take you." Guys, that's not biblical. And I wish I was prepared for this. I could give you some scripture to back it up. But Jesus promised that He would give us the strength to endure, that He would be right there with us, and He would be right there and 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 you know help us fight the fight. But, you know, he basically said when he was alive, you know, look what I've had to go through in my life. You're no better than I am. I'm the master. You're the servant. So your life's not going to be easier than mine. Not if you're living it right. <laughs> and if you think about it, that makes sense. Jesus didn't have an easy life where everything went right, where you never had to, you know, never had to work and never, you know, always had plenty of money and never had any problems. Jesus' life was not like that. So, we, you know, ours is not going to be either. So anyway, that's what Paul's telling Timothy here. He's saying you're going to have hard times in your life, but as a good soldier of Christ, you have to endure them. Verse 4, No man that worth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned, except he strive lawfully? The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Now Paul's not saying it's my gospel like I'm the one that made it up. He's saying I'm, it's the gospel that I'm preaching right now. That You know, the gospel I'm preaching. That's what he means by this. Wherein I suffer trouble, trouble as an evildoer, even unto bonds, but the word of God is not bound. Therefore, therefore I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. Anyway, that way, guys, we're going to stop right there. Oh, I know what else tonight I was going to talk about, which, like I said, I don't know, really know if we got time, but maybe I can make it quick. I just, you know, guys, and I always hate to say something that irks me because I know Brother Woody gets on to me sometimes talking about things that irk me. But, you know, I think we need to bring this stuff out, you know. Uh, and I know I'm not perfect, and I'm not saying I am, but, you know, you have Christians sometimes that, what I'm trying to get at, guys, there, there's a local guy here that owns a local business. I'm not going to say a name. I mean, I don't think anybody would watch. I only have a few local viewers that watch anyway. One of them's my cousin and a couple more people. But anyway, me and him have talked many, many times before about, uh, you know, as not only as, as, as people, as business owners, but as Christians, that we should support each other. We should support our, each other, our local businesses, you know, especially Christian-owned businesses. And anyway, guys, I don't know. This guy needed some motorcycle tires. and uh, He kind of asked Dad if he could buy some kind of on a credit deal. And, you know, right now we just, you know, business is kind of slowing down, which I wish Dad would have came to me and talked to me about it because maybe we could have worked something out. I guess Dad just flat out told him no, he couldn't do it, but. Anyway, what I'm getting at, guys, is he went and bought a set of tires. And now I know there's nobody that will credit tires anywhere. None of the local shops. I mean, this, this, I know what he's done. He's, he's ordered them off the Internet, I'm sure. But what gets me is he's ordered them off the Internet because they've been cheaper, because he could get them cheaper from the Internet than he could from us. He's probably used a credit card, too, and that's why I told Dad. I said, well, you should have took, took his credit card. Of course, Dad went back and forth with me. Oh, no, that's not it. And, but like I said, I know the case. He's found them cheaper. He's bought them. We put them on today. And Dad even gave, gave him a break on putting them on, which I don't know. I, I kind of felt conflicted about that. But what I'm getting at, guys, it just it irks me when, when Christians, you know, this guy has talked forever about that. Me and him have talked about it. And he always talked about how he appreciated me because when we bought new cars or, or and had uh, the thing that he does done, we always took them to him. We never even thought about going anywhere else. 
And he always said he appreciated that, and he would always come to us, and he would never, you know, go anywhere else. You know, and then he comes in here today carrying a set of motorcycle tires that came from somewhere else. You know, it just it just bothers me when Christians will not, when they when they, when they act like they've got integrity, but then when it comes down to money, they don't, and that just bothers me. Like I said, you know. Um, but anyway, guys, like I said, I may be I may be looking at that wrong, but if I am, I pray that the Lord will uh, straighten me out on it. Anyway, guys, I love you all. This video is double the length I wanted it to be, but I just have to stay up and upload it because I feel like the Holy Spirit's led me tonight. We've had a good time. So if y'all need anything, let me know. Good Lord willing, guys, I'll be here tomorrow night. Until I see you all again, good night and God bless. Remember to pray for me. Good night.